working on lesson three today, equations for functions. So we've been talking about input output tables, rules, um, how they're really just functions, and today we're going to see how we can come up with some equations with that. For our starter, it says let's find outputs from equations. I have a squares area here. So fill in the table of input output pairs for the given rule, uh, write an algebraic expression for the rule and the box in the diagram. So the side length of a square is our S or input and then the area of the square is going to be our output. And I can see that here from the input output diagram, right? So what's my rule? Well you guys know that to find the area of a square, it's just length times width, right? So I'm gonna put that, um, but for a square, the length and the width are the same thing, really. So if it says S is the side length, so my rule would just be S times S, okay? So I've got S times S. So if my input is eight, that's my first one here. That's really eight times eight. Well, eight times eight is 64. And then my next input is 2.2. .2, so I'm gonna do side times side, right? 2.2 .2 times 2.2 .2 gives me 4.84. And then 12 and 1 fourth for the next input. So 12 and 1 fourth times 12 and 1 fourth and that's going to give me 150 and 1 16th and then what if my side length is s right so if my side length is s we know we're just multiplying it by itself there is a shorter way to write that uh, than what i have written down there as s times s um, anything multiplied by itself is just that thing squared. So I'll just put S squared. Okay. Uh, and actually, I could replace that in the box there as well. It's S times S, but really, that equals S squared. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to our first activity. Um, it's going to have us do some matching here. So it says record your answers to the questions in the table provided. Number one, I have to match each of these descriptions with the diagram. So you can see all of my input output diagrams that I have uh, down here. Um, A looks like S is the input and then it's S cubed is my rule and then V is my output. Some thoughts about what that could equal right off the bat. For B, it's T is my input and then 60 times T is the rule. Um, and then D is my output. So I think I know what T and D stand for. X is my input for C and then 3X minus 4 looks just like a normal equation. Y is my output. Okay. And then R is my input, uh, 2 times pi times R. Okay, so with that pi being there, I think I know what that one is. And then C, I think I know what that stands for. All right, let's see what we got here. So match each of these descriptions with a diagram. The first one, it says the circumference C, that's what I thought C stood for, of a circle with a radius R. Okay, so A and uppercase D go together. So we've matched our first one there. Um, for lowercase b, it says the distance in miles D. So I thought that's what that stood for was distance that you would travel in T hours. So T stood for time. That's what I thought. And you're going 60 miles per hour. So B goes with B, right? For C, for the next one, it says the output when you triple the input and subtract 4. Triple the input. That would be multiplying it by 3. The only one that has that 
is C. So C goes with C, which means D has to go with A. Let's read it just to make sure. It says the volume of a cube V. So that's what that V stood for, given its edge length S, which that's what the S stood for. Okay, so let's go ahead and match those up down here. We said the description for A went with diagram D. B went with B. So lowercase b went with capital B. Uh, lowercase c went with capital C. And lowercase d, the volume of a cube description, went with uppercase A. All right. The next thing it wants us to do is write an equation for each description that expresses the output as a function of the input. So the output has to equal the rule given the input, right? That's how we're going to set all of these up. So my equation, uh, I can scroll up a little bit now. I don't need to see those descriptions as much. If I know that the description for A goes with diagram D, then that's what I'm going to look at. So my equation is going to come from the output, which is in this case C, being equal to the rule which of course uses that input, right? So for D, that, that's gonna be C equals two pi R, okay? For uppercase B, for that diagram, again, it's gonna be the output. D is equal to that rule, which in this case, is 60t, because t is using the input, right? For c, for diagram c, it's going to be y, the output, is equal to that rule that uses the input, so 3x minus 4. And then finally for a, it's going to be v equals s cubed. Okay, now s cubed, remember that means side times side times side. So you're using the side in a multiplication three times. All right, so here it's asking us to actually figure out what the output would be given the input of five. So if the input is five, for this one, that means C, I'm gonna have to write kind of small here, is equal to two times pi times five. Right? And since that's all multiplication, I can kind of take a shortcut here. I can do 5 times 2 first. 5 times 2 is 10. So really it's just 10 times pi. Okay? So 10 times pi. Pi, we typically use uh, 3.14 as an approximation of pi. I'll do that here. 3.14 times 10 is... 31.4. We know the multiplying by 10, you just move the decimal over a spot, right? So I've got the, my circumference when the radius is 5 is 31.4. All right, so for the next one, um, I've got, I have to write small again, D equals 60 times 5. Okay, so um, I know 5 times 6 is 30. So add another zero on there because it's not five times six, it's five times 60. And that would give me 300. So my distance would be 300 miles. For the next one, uh, I've got y equals, instead of three x, now this is three times five minus four. Well, three times five is 15, and then 15 minus four is 11. And then finally, um, if my input is 5, that means V equals 5 cubed, right? So 5 cubed, that means 5 times 5 times 5. So 5 times 5, that's 25. 25 times 5 again, think about if you had 5 quarters, it's 125. So my volume 
would be 125 cubic units. All right, so this next thing, you may have remembered this from science, um, the independent and dependent variables, right? The way that we say that function kind of gives it away, right? The circumference depends on the radius. The distance depends on the time. Y depends on X, or the volume depends on the side length, okay? The other way we say that, of course, is circumference is a function of the radius. Distance is a function of time. Uh, y is a function of x, and then finally volume is a function of side length, right? But the way that we say that kind of tells us what the independent and the dependent variable is. An easier way to remember that, though, because no one, you know, not everyone can remember how to say the sentences correctly. Independent starts with an I, and input starts with an I. That's the easiest way to remember it. So, in this case, what's my input? We'll look up at your input-output diagrams, okay? For this first one, for uh, D, uh, the one that we'll fill in first, here's my input, R. Here's my output, C, right? So my independent variable is R. My dependent variable is C. And then just go through each diagram and do that, right? My independent variable for diagram B, that input there is T. The output is D. Okay. And then I'm going to also, let's go back here. So that's why we write in pencil in math class. So you, don't, you might not have to erase it. But I'm going to also put that that is the radius, not just that it's R. Okay, and I'm going to put that this is the circumference. That one you might have to erase to get it to fit in there. T, I'm going to say that stands for time. And D is distance. Okay. Um, for the next one, it's just Y and X. Oh, oops. It would help if I did it correctly. My input for that diagram is X. Another reason why we write in pencil in math class. Uh, and my dependent variable is Y. And then finally for the last one for diagram A, S, which again stood for side length, is my independent variable. And my de dependent variable is V, which stood for volume. Whew, that was a lot, um, but it kind of all comes together. You can see how we know what the independent and the dependent variables are pretty easily from our uh, input-output diagrams. Okay. All right, so for the next activity, and this is actually our last activity, it says here, Jada had some dimes and quarters that had a total value of $12.50. Okay, so we don't know how many dimes, we don't know how many quarters, but we know that it totaled up to $12.50. The relationship between the number of dimes D, so of course they use D for dimes and they're going to use Q for quarters, and the number of quarters Q can be expressed by the equation 0.1D plus 0.25Q equals 12.50. Now, how did they come up with that? Well, you guys know right here for this part of it, the number of dimes is being multiplied by 0 0.1, that's because a dime is worth 10 cents, right? The letter Q, which stands for the number of quarters, is being multiplied by 0 0.25, that's because quarters are worth 25 cents. And when you add those two totals together, that gets you how much money you have all together, which she said, or which they said was $12.50 for Jada, okay? So we're going to answer these questions using that formula. It says if Jada has four quarters, how many dimes does she have? Now, I know some of you could figure this out in your head pretty quickly. All right? But I want to show you how we can use the equation to get those answers. It says here if she has four quarters. So the number of quarters is represented by Q in that equation. It's right here. Right? I'm going to put in a four there. It says now that she has four quarters. So I've got 
my new equation is 0.1d plus 0.25 instead of q I'm gonna put times 4 equals $12.50 well 4 quarters is a dollar okay so I've got just simplify that 0.1d plus 1 because it equals a dollar now equals 12.5 and now look we have a two-step equation you guys can solve this by now some of you can probably solve it in your sleep I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides it looks like old instead of 0.1d um, sorry I've got um, subtract 1 from both sides that cancels out those ones that leaves me with 0.1d equals 11 0.5 and then just divide both sides by 0 0.1 that's gonna get that D by itself and when I type that in 11.5 time or times whoops I almost did what I was thinking in my head there divided by 0 0.1 that's gonna get me 115 so she has 115 dimes if she has four quarters. Okay, And then the next thing says, well, what if she doesn't have four quarters? What if she has 10 quarters? If Jada has 10 quarters, how many dimes does she have? Well, do the same thing. 0.1D plus 0.25, but instead of Q, now I'm going to put 10 quarters, and that has to equal $12.50. Okay, go ahead and figure out how much money that is in quarters. If I have 10 quarters, that's 1D plus 10 times 0.25, uh, that's 2.5. Remember, you just move the decimal over one place when you're multiplying by 10. And now it's just a t another two-step equation, right? Subtract 2.5 from both sides. We have 0.1D equals 10. 12.5 minus 2.5 is 10. And then divide both sides by 0 0.1. And I've got 10 divided by 0 0.1. Now, she's got 100 dimes. Right? So they all equal up. I'll circle that. They all equal up to $12.50. It's just when she has a different amount of quarters, it's obviously going to give her a different amount of dimes, right? The more quarters she has, the less dimes she's going to have. And conversely, the more dimes she has, the less quarters she's going to have. All right. So for number three, it says here, is the number of dimes a function of the number of quarters? Well, the way I just explained that, yes, it is. As she has more dimes, she's going to have less quarters, right? <clears throat> and as she has more quarters, she's going to have less dimes. I mean, it works both ways, okay? So I kind of answered number three and number six at the bottom. Um, so if we say yes, which we, which we are, it says write a rule that starts with D equals blank, okay? It says so that you can determine the output which is D, the number of dimes, from a given input, which is Q, the number of quarters. All right, so the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to take that original equation and I'm going to do just what it says right here. I'm going to get the number of dimes by itself. I'm going to get the variable D by itself. So just like we, we started on the other two equations, I'm going to write the original equation. D, oh, 0 0.1, sorry, D plus 0 0.25, Q equals 12.5, and I'm going to try to get that variable by itself. Same way we always do, right? Get rid of the other term first. So now I don't know what Q is, so I'm just going to subtract the entire term from both sides. Now, I can't actually subtract these because this one has a Q and this one doesn't, okay? So keep that in mind. I'm, I'm left with 0.1D equals 12.5 minus 0.25Q. I have to leave it like that because I can't, those aren't like terms. I can't actually subtract them. My next step is divide both sides by 0.1. 
And when I do that, that gets that variable by itself. D is by itself, but now I have to divide both of these right here by 0 0.1. So when I type that into the calculator, 12.5 divided by 0 0.1 that gets me 125 minus, and then when I do 0 0.25, 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.1, that gives me 2.5. Now I could have used that equation to find out how many dimes she has when she has the number of quarters that they gave us okay and look we, we can check that real fast for the first one it was four quarters if you put four in for this equation 2.5 times 4 is 10 125 minus 10 115 okay the next one they gave us well what if she has 10 quarters so put a 10 in here well multiplying by 10 just moves that decimal over a spot, right? So 2.5 times 10 is 25. 125 minus 25 gets us 100, okay? So actually, we're gonna switch it up. For number six here, or for four, five, and six, instead of using the original equation, let's jump ahead and do number six. I already told you that our answer is yes. Let's get Q by itself so that I can use this new equation to answer questions four and five, all right? So for but for number six, I'm going to write out the original equation again, 0.1d plus 0.25q equals 12.5, and I'm going to get the q by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting old from both sides, or 0.1d from both sides. And when I do that, I've got 0.25q equals, now I can't actually do that subtraction, the 12.5 doesn't have a D, so I've got 12.5 minus old, <laughs> and then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.25. That's going to get my Q by itself, right, because those 0 0.25s cancel there, and I'm left with Q equals, but now I've got to divide both those numbers by 0 0.25. So 12.5 divided by 0 0.25 gives me 50 minus 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.25, and that equals 0 0.4. Okay, I should I guess I should put the zero out in front there. 0.4D. Alright, it's not old anymore. Um, now I can use that equation to answer questions four and five. It says for number four, if Jada has 25 dimes, how many quarters does she have? Well, I'm gonna use my new equation. Q equals 50 minus 0 0.4 times, and then it says she has 25 dimes. All right, so she has 25 dimes, 0 0.4 times 25, that's 10. So now I've got Q equals 50 minus 10. Well, 50 minus 10 is 40, okay? That was a little bit easier to solve than the way we did it for number one when we were trying to find out the number of dimes um, using the original equation, right? Using this new equation just is a little bit easier. For number five, it says, well, what about if Jada has 30 dimes? So if Jada has 30 dimes, I've got Q equals 50 minus 0 0.4, this time, times 30. Let's go and figure out what that is. Okay, 0 0.4 times 30 equals 12. So I've got Q equals 50 minus 12 and 50 minus 12 is 38. There we go. A lot easier. A lot easier. All right. You guys are going to go ahead and get started on your assignment on the next page. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you ask.